so good. I would, I would really, um, uh, from my standpoint and my culture, what, what God's done in our midst, because, uh, I think, I think we might, may all have different definitions of prayer. To me, it's a real elastic word. Like if I say define prayer, define prayer, define prayer, uh, I think we may all have different definitions. And so when prayer is said in this culture, everyone, at least I used to always think, well, house of prayer, that's Kansas City. And I'm so grateful for what Kansas City has galvanized and, and mm. has been catalytic for in the body of Christ. But my, uh, my expression of that looks really different than, than what's happening in Kansas City. It's the same seed and pursuit, but there's a different expression on a local level. And, and so I think you've got to, uh, you've got to really figure out what that means for you. What does it mean? What does it mean for you to build a culture of prayer? And in our world, uh, worship has been central to that worship and how we approach the Lord. So Thanksgiving, we, we start every prayer set out with Thanksgiving, with Thanksgiving. My guys, when I'm in the room, they know first 10 minutes, if I'm in the room, they better be thanking the Lord. We never show up empty handed. Uh, praise. We talk about praise. We talk about what worship is. And I think, I think really understanding these words that we think we know, but asking the Holy Spirit for divine revelation for what that looks like in our culture uh, because you are birthing a culture. If prayer is just an activity, it won't be sustained. It has to become a culture. And that culture in your world, it, it may not be harp and bowl. It may not be, uh, I don't know what it looks like for you. It may not be, we call ours TWI. I don't know what it will look like in your world, but you as the leader um, are called, I think, to birth a culture of prayer and its communion with him. And and I would just encourage you to to... This is, this is the phrase we use is we became students of the presence of God. We became students of him. So our, our times of prayer were prayer laboratories of sorts where we would, we would, uh, through thanksgiving and praise, he's enthroned upon it. So the guest of honor enters in, but when he becomes the host, that language actually has legs. So when he becomes the host, did we partner with him? Did we move with him? Did we, did we unify around what he was authoring faith in? Uh, I could get into the nitties of that, like the nitty gritties of it in our world. But, but I think you've got to see that you're birthing a culture. And many of your cultures are already, uh, you know, you already have a church culture. So what does it look like to shift your culture into being more of a presence-centered praying culture? I think that's the language we're using. But if that's what you're after, um, it's going to look unique in your world, but I know this. I know that the zeal of the Lord, the zeal for his house is present and he is ready to mark your church with himself. And that's ultimately what this is unto. It's, 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 it's my house <laughs> will be a house of prayer, but, but the my, the he possessing his house, once again, that's what we're building. We're building houses marked by him. So what does that look like in your context? If you're in rural America, if you're in Nashville, for us, we were in the homosexual district, man. And so you know what it looked like for us? I read Romans 1. I became the, the pastor that like somehow cracked the code because I married three homosexuals that were in the lifestyle. And now they're married to women. How do you do it? How do we do it? How do we do it? All the time. It was, it was, so I spent a lot of times in Romans 1. One of the things is whoever said you got to weep for him first before you talk to him. I mean, break, your heart needs to break over that issue. But Romans one twenty one it says, for uh, although they they uh, they did not honor God or give him thanks, therefore God gave them over. But that 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 phrase, honor God or give thanks, what we did in the homosexual community is we returned back to what they did not do: honor him or give him thanks. And so in Oakland, we just opened up this gate through Thanksgiving. Just every day, thank you, thank you, Lord. And it was this little hinge that opened up a door where God ended up resting in that place. And the number one thing these guys would say when they would come from the lifestyle, the neighborhoods, what it was called, they would come into our environment. We had a coffee shop too. It, it bled over into the coffee shop, but they would just say, something's different. I can't define what it is. Something's different. Something's different. Something's different. 
Uh, I remember a guy in drag, my favorite story is the guy in drag that got saved out of, out of the, he used to travel and he was on pageants of, of the parades and he got saved and he came into our place and he had been coming for a while. And his experience was this, when you guys start singing, I feel like someone's hugging me. And, and to me that you can't, I mean, the Lord is there. <laughs> That's that. And, and now he's gotten clean, you know, he's gotten delivered and freed and very proponent for, you know, biblical sexuality, but, but it was never about his sexuality. Like that was just a symptom of a deeper issue. And when he came into the house of the Lord, where the presence of the Lord was, he found that liberty and freedom. And so I would just say this, you're birthing a culture and it's a culture that uh, when we say prayer, when we say worship, what does that look like in your world? Uh, and I know that the zeal of the Lord will give you that blueprint, but it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of no's to this one yes, but he's going to be faithful to birth it. Really believe that.